With a narcissist so that you will not lose your mind, I'm going to give you five ideal ways to co-parent and 10 realities of co-parenting that you must know to deal with a narcissistic hijackal. Stay tuned. Welcome to Save Your Sanity, help for handling hijackals, those difficult, toxic, and often disturbing people in your life. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler, the Relationship Help Doctor, and I'm here for you. You'll get the insight, skills, strategies, and support to stop tolerating verbal and emotional abuse, whether it's happening now or it happened to you in the past, maybe by a parent, partner, ex, relative, or even a co-worker. Time to take life back, to recover and to rediscover you, your values, dreams, desires, and realize them in healthy ways. In Hello. Today we're going to talk about something so important because so frequently if you have been in relationship with a hijackal, one of those relentlessly difficult toxic people that I talk about here all the time, you are likely going to end up co-parenting rather than parenting. And that's just the unfortunate truth that after a while, you can see no way to stay in the relationship without the children being negatively affected, without you being worn down, torn down, put down, and neither of those things are tolerable, nor should they be tolerated. So today I'm going to talk about co-parenting hacks, uh, things that you can do when you find yourself in the co-parenting situation that will make things a little more tolerable, a little more workable, a little more reasonable in your own mind. It doesn't mean that their hijackal is going to be reasonable. It just has to be reasonable for you. And you don't want to make your kids feel like pawns or messengers or casualties of your divorce. The hijackal wants that because hijackals, as I've said so often, they don't have much love to give you, but they sure have a lot of uses for you. And the same is true about their children. They have uses for the children. So in a perfect world after divorce, the children would only know that life is more peaceful in each of the two homes and that they miss the parent they're not with. That would be great. That's often how it is. That's how it should go if we're going to have a separation in a family. And co-parenting with your former partner needs to be all about the children, not about your relationship with your ex. Let me say that again. Co-parenting with a former partner needs to be all about the children, not about the relationship with the ex. And especially that is true when you are co-parenting with a narcissist or, my word, a hijackal. And though it's not always easy, children need to know and they need to feel that they are way more important than any conflict that is or hopefully was between their parents. And making sure that they feel that way is what effective conscious co-parenting is all about. Now I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to your hijackal ex when I say effective conscious co-parenting. That's not what's in their interest. That's not what they're up to, but you can be. So if you need ways to know if you were in fact co-parenting with a hijackal, get my free ebook, How to Spot a Hijackal. Just go to hijackals.com and you spell that hijack, A-L-S, dot com. Lots of things there for you as well, but you can get the free ebook if you just want to make sure. And if you want to work through all of the issues that come up to understanding the real deep processing of hijackals, I have a program called Seeing the Cycles, an online home study program videos, worksheets, journal articles, all of that that will help you. You'll find that at my website, transformingrelationship.com, transformingrelationship.com. So today, I want to give you the five ideals of co-parenting, 
what in a perfect world it would look like. And then I want to give you five, ten, actually ten practical realities of co-parenting with a narcissistic hijackal because they're different and you'll quickly see that. So when you co-parent well with a non-hijackal, you eliminate exposing the children to adult relationship issues. And that's key. Your children are supposed to have their childhood not be a confidant for a parent. That's just inappropriate. They don't have the brain development to empathize with adult issues. And it's just not fair to ever make your child into a confidant about adult issues. And what the child should only know that mom and dad are not together and they choose to live apart. And your job in this perfect ideal world is to reassure them that you both love them and will do all that you can to keep their lives as normal as possible. That's all they need to know in a perfect world or in a healthy world or in a non hijackal world. And not only do they not need details about the split up, but you risk jeopardizing their relationship with the other parent when you share them. And that's not fair to the kids. Yes, they'll have questions. Answer their questions in the most specific age appropriate way, the shortest possible way that will meet their need for their ages, not yours, to help them understand the general issues. Don't give them specific incidences. Children have enough upset to contend with when parents separate. It's enough to deal with moving or losing time with their friends or missing the non-custodial parent or feeling uncertain about what's going on or not having the right things at the right house. These are kid concerns. Children don't need and should not be hearing about adult issues. They should, in a perfect world, never hear one parent say anything negative about the other, directly or within earshot of the children. Here in California, because I've mediated many divorces, I know that every divorce settlement states that clearly that you will not say anything negative about the other parent to the child. And lawyers hearing that this happened can and will interpret that as parental alienation in this ideal world. Of course, we know that that doesn't always happen. So whether or not divorcing was a shared decision or something that happened to you, it's what's happening now. It's the reality. And not engaging your kids in the ongoing details of the conflict or the disappointments or the anger, that's very important. I know it's not easy, but you're an adult and that's what a wise adult who deeply cares about the well-being of the children will do. So as I said, I'm going to give you five ideals, ideal clear goals to guide you through co-parenting in a healthy situation. I hope that you'll take these in and listen to them often, think about them often to help you stay focused on what's important. And then I'm going to give you the 10 unfortunate realities that you need to know when co-parenting with a narcissist. So here are the ideals. This is what you would say to yourself. I am the model I want my children to follow. Therefore, everything I do and say demonstrates who I want my children to strive towards becoming see how ideal that is, but isn't it a wonderful uh, goal? I'll read it again because I've got them written down. I'll put them in the show notes for you, these ones, these affirmations. I am the model I want my children to follow. Therefore, everything I do and say demonstrates who I want my children to strive towards becoming. Number two, ideal healthy co-parenting goal. I communicate with my ex in the way I wish for him or her to communicate with me. I choose collaboration and conversation over conflict and acrimony. Again, I communicate with my ex in the way I wish for him or her to communicate with me. I choose collaboration and conversation over conflict and acrimony. Number three, 
I focus on my children and what keeps them healthy, physically, mentally, and emotionally. That includes doing what is in their best interest first. So you can definitely do this ideal one no matter if you're co-parenting with a hijackal. I'll say it again. Number three, I focus on my children and what keeps them healthy, physically, mentally, and emotionally healthy. That includes doing what is in their best interests first. Number four, I turn my attention from what I don't like about my ex to what he or she does well for the children. It's about the kids, not what my personal issues are with my ex. Okay, that's a tough one, but you can do it even with a hijackal ex. I'll say it again. Number four, I turn my attention from what I don't like about my ex to what he or she does well for the children. It's about the kids, not what my personal issues are with my ex. And the last ideal healthy co-parenting goal, <clears throat> I allow my children to enjoy their childhood and ensure they're only concerned with age-appropriate thoughts, feelings, and actions. I protect them from being pawns, messengers, or casualties of my divorce. Whew, that's a big one. Number five, I allow my children to enjoy their childhood and ensure they are only concerned with age-appropriate thoughts, feelings, and actions. I protect them from being pawns and messengers or casualties of my divorce. Being your best self can prove difficult. I know when everything in you wants to blame and shame and complain. I know. I've been divorced with children too. I divorced a hijackal. I understand down to my toes. Believe me, you may have deep resentments after years of a rocky marriage or fresh scars that the divorce brought on. I know it can feel like your ex should pay dearly for it and for a long, long time. Leave that to the court because if you live in that mindset, you're going to hurt yourself. You have to get your head on straight and do what's best for the kids and ask for help to gain a healthier perspective. You know, I walk with many people who are making the decision, should I go? Should I stay? If they make the decision to leave, how to plan and do it well, then how to choose an attorney, how to walk through the process of separation and divorce, how to deal with the co-parenting situation. If I can help you, go to transformingrelationship.com. If you know you're ready to talk to me, I have a new client, one full hour offer, $97 only, and you go to beaclient.com, beaclient.com. So <clears throat> no matter how frequently you have to remind yourself, and I know the difficulties of doing so, you need to put the health and well-being of your children first. And so let's talk now about the down and dirty 10 realities that you actually need to embrace. You need to understand. You need to let yourself know these things have to happen when you are co-parenting with a narcissistic, sociopathic, any of those things, a hijackal ex. These are things that will help you get through it in the best and healthiest way for you and your children. And the sooner you do them, the better you'll feel. So here's number one. Lower your expectations. Just because you got a divorce, that person's not going to change. In fact, now they're angrier. They're more upset. They're more vindictive. They more want to win. So lower your expectations. Yes, the court said you were going to get this amount of money and your, things were going to happen at this time. Just lower your expectations. You know that's not going to happen because they have to win. So they're not going to do what they're supposed to do. They're not going to take the higher road. You already know that. So lower your expectations. Plan for them not doing what they're supposed to do. That will help you stay in charge of the situation. Number two. Don't fall for his bids or her bids for attention. You know that it's going to be, well, could you just do this for me? And could you, could you 
um, make these changes or <clears throat> I need the kids for the holidays. Now, you know that a hijackal makes a point of ruining every holiday and celebration because the hijackal has to be the center of attention. They have to be the one with the power. So they'll ruin it with their presence or with their absence. And this is a bid for attention. So in light of number one, lowering your expectations, expect that the hijackal is going to ruin the holidays or make a good attempt and have a plan B so that you know that you are going to do what you're going to do and you're clear about it. Okay, number three, communicate only about the kids and refuse to communicate about anything else. If you have an attorney, that's the person they can communicate with. If you can't communicate with them well by talking, make a clear boundary that all communication will be by text or email. Now, I highly recommend that anyway if you're with a volatile hijackal. And the reason for that is then you have a written record and it goes into your documentation. So limiting everything to text and email communication, I think, is a really good idea right from the start. Because then everything is in writing. There is no question. And then you download all of that communication and you keep it in your documentation. But no matter what, communicate only about things that have to do with the kids, not about you, not about the relationship, not about the divorce, only things to do with the kids. And number four, again, going back to that communication, you must make a boundary that you will only respond to reasonable communication, that it has to be delivered in a reasonable way. It has to make a reasonable request or a reasonable request for information. It has to be reasonable in tone, language. It has to be factual. Otherwise, you won't respond. You need to set that boundary. It must be reasonable communication. And again, refer to my earlier comment, best in writing. Okay. Number five, <clears throat> make a boundary, make a clear agreement, make a clear statement that you have 24 hours to respond to any communication of any kind. You do not have to respond before 24 hours, but you will and agree to respond within 24 hours. This gives you the opportunity to hear something, go a little crazy, settle down, and then compose your response. Or to compose your response in notepad, never in your text or email, <laughs> and then go back when a few hours have passed and see if that's really what you want to say. So a 24-hour response, except in cases of emergency, will save your sanity. It will save your relationship too, and it will allow you to stay emotionally grown up. <laughs> That's important because you don't want any explosive things going from your end that your ex is going to use in court to show what an unreasonable person you are. Okay, number seven. Recognize that a hijackal is going to project. That means that what they fear is true about themselves, they're going to say is true about you. What they know they're going to do, they will say you're going to do. You've probably had the projection happen in the history where you say something and they say, oh no, that's you. Well, know that they're going to project on you one way or the other. So no, it sounds like this. The hijackal says, I know you don't care about the kids. You need to know that that's a projection. And what's really going on in the hijackal's body is, I don't care about the kids. So they project it out onto you and make it your feeling or your thought or your need or your want when actually it's theirs. So you need to recognize that that's what's going on. They're telegraphing what they're thinking, feeling, what they're going to do. And because they're telling you, you do it. And when you get the hang of that, when you start to realize, ah, okay, it's a bit like a poker tell. They're telling me 
this is how their mind is working, but they're telling me it's how my mind is working. You get a lot more information that way. So very important to recognize the projections because they're always there. They always were there. Okay, number eight is clear. I mentioned it earlier in the ideal, but I want to mention it again here in the realities. Be the best parent possible. Be who you want your kids to model themselves after. Be the reasonable one. Be the one who is not bringing up problems in the relationship that don't have to bear on the children's need to know or don't bear directly on the children's safety. Talk about the hijackal with your friends, with your therapist, but don't talk about the hijackal with the children because you want to be the best parent you can. You want to be the loving parent who is there for them, the parent who is interested in them, the parent who understands them, and that's what you want to be demonstrating. So be that very best parent. I know it's difficult when you're constantly being pulled off center by emails or texts or hearing something they said to somebody else's smear campaign about you. I know it's very difficult. Remember, I've been there. (laughs) I've, I've walked that. I know it. So I know what you're going through. So I'm not saying these things from a lack of knowledge of actually having done it. It's not textbook stuff for me. I have done this. I have had to do this. Number nine. Always, always be with the kids. When the hijackal says, you know, I have to change our weekend. Can I change the weekend? I want to do this this weekend. Will you take the kids? You say, of course I'll take the children, no matter if it's inconvenient for you or not. Here's why. If you say, yes, I'll take the children, but I will not trade weekends. I will take the children and we will keep the same schedule, and then you document that, then you begin to show that the hijackal has uses for the children. It's not because the hijackal wants the time. He wants the convenience, or she wants to do what she wants to do and wants you to become the person that they can rely on, she can rely on. So whether you have a male or a female hijackal, it doesn't matter. There are equal numbers of both. But the thing is, when you are asked to take the children, Take them and document them. Don't turn it into a fight because what will happen in court if this becomes a pattern is that you will be able to demonstrate that they don't need that much custodial parenting time because look what they've done. This is why you need great documentation. And number nine, validate your kids. So very important. And that means that you are interested in your children. The hijackal is not going to validate the children. You need to validate the children. That means that you are interested in their feelings. That you say, oh, how do you feel? Oh, when did that start? What do you think is happening that makes that feeling? And you get interested in them and validate them. What a hijackal will do is say, oh, you shouldn't feel like that. That's not validation. That's writing them off. You want to validate them because they're going through a tough time too. They don't know which parent to emulate. They know it's really difficult, but they have each of your DNA and they're not sure what to do. Very difficult. And they're going through different levels of brain growth and they are unsure. So you be sure to validate That means don't be too busy to always have time where you're just hanging with the kids and they can talk. Don't overschedule your children. The narcissist will find things for the kids to do so they don't have to spend time with them and they think it makes them look like a good parent to say the kids are so busy. But you need to be the parent who validates them, who's there for them, who cares about what they think and feel and wants to hear that. And your ex won't do that. So this is very, very important for your children's growth and for your growth in your relationship with the children. So there are 10 things, 10 important things. There are many, many more. And we can talk about that if you want to work with me. Remember, just go to beaclient.com and let's talk. Let's find out what your issues are and where you need clarity, what you'd like your results to be, and how you could work toward that. Beaclient.com. 
And then listen to my other podcast, Emotional Savvy. Just go to EmotionalSavvy.com and get some broader relationship information there. Broaden your way of thinking about relationship and clarify what you feel about relationship. And then the last thing I want to say between these five ideals and these 10 realities of being with a difficult person is that document everything. Now, I mentioned it earlier, but please do. Don't let things go by. Document it and save it in a file on Dropbox to which nobody, particularly the hijackal, can possibly find it. Keep a file with dates and times and facts, only facts, what actually happened or was reported to you by the children as having happened. And remember going back to number nine, always take the kids. That means that you are going to have a good documentation of every time you were asked to change custody for the convenience of the hijackal. So document, document, document. So no matter how frequently you have to remind yourself and the difficulty of doing so, put the health and well-being of your children first. That will help you stay centered. That will help your health and well-being too. And that means that your love for your children has to be demonstrated as stronger than the loathing you have for your partner and the divorce. And when you keep that top of mind, you'll eventually master successful co-parenting. It may not be comfortable. It may not be the way you want it. But you can master it. You can feel like, all right, I know what to do. I am not being battered around like a cat toy. Uh, I am in charge of this process as much as I possibly can be. And that will give your children the best emotional environment to thrive in because they deserve that. After all, they didn't ask for this divorce. They didn't ask for this muddle. They didn't ask for this conflict. So we have to keep it away from them as much as possible. And be fully, fully present for your children. So I hope this has helped you. It's so important. Get outside help for yourself. I'm always here. Beaclient.com. But get outside help. And don't go to people and just, you know, of course you need to vent. But don't just go and focus on the, the negative. If something happens, okay, go spill it. But then say, and here's what I'm working toward. Reaffirm the positive. Here's who I am and what I'm working toward. And use that. Yes, we all need compassion. We all need someone to know we're hurting and have them understand. I know I do that a lot for my clients because I do understand. Um, But also you need to be focused on forward. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler. I hope these tips help you. Please go back and listen again. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast if this has been of interest to you and go back and listen to others. You can also find my YouTube channel at 4FOR Relationship Help, H-E-L-P. There's over 400 videos there for you. YouTube.com slash 4 Relationship Help. I look forward to talking with you again in the next episode. Until then, treat yourself very well because you matter and your children are counting on you. I'm so glad you spent this time with me today. I hope you heard something that touched your heart and empowered you to move forward. You can have the life and relationships that you most want and that begins with you within you today. I'm always here for you. Life can get better, and you heard that from me, the Relationship Help Doctor. I'm Roberta Shaler, and I work with clients throughout the world through video conferencing. We can talk. So learn more at 4RelationshipHelp.com, F-O-R Relationship H-E-L-P.com, or visit me on YouTube at 4RelationshipHelp. Join me for next week's show.